All right, so we're going to hit some fundamentals with GitHub and Visual Studio today. We're going to start by creating a repository, cloning that repository, committing some code to that repository, and pushing. So a lot of these basics. Um, I'll also show you um, how to take an existing local repository and, and do a push you know, because that's really relevant for you guys because you have a local repository on your computer already. You don't need to clone again, but you have a local repository that is your coursework and you just want to do a lab, for example, and push it all within Visual Studio. That's very relevant for for you. So uh, those are the two examples that we're going to do. And, and uh, you know what, the, the third, uh, so if I, if I just do what I'm supposed to do as a teacher and kind of start with the objectives for what are we going to do. Uh, create a github.com repository. Clone and clone, commit and push to that repository. Uh, and then we will uh, add code to another local, a different, when I say another, a different local repository, commit and push, it's real simple. And then we will use uh, the command line interface with git commands. So these, are using Visual Studio, using VS Community 2022. So that's a GUI. Visual Studio Community is obviously a GUI. And then kind of at the end, we'll just look at some of the command line commands to do the same thing. I mean, it really boils down to every company is going to do it a, a different ways. Um, you know, probably arguably the power users will use the command line. And I believe most people even learn at the command line, uh, you know, in industry. Um, so being familiar with the command line commands uh, are certainly to your benefit, knowing how to do this outside of the GUIs. Okay, so um, I'm on github.com. I'm logged in. I have an account. My account is Evan Gudmasted. And right here, I can kind of view my repositories. Now, this is a newer uh, account. Uh, actually, I guess I created this a long time ago, but I, I haven't really been active on it. So I just started using this again, um, like very recently. And so there's not a, like a lot of my work out here. Uh, actually, oddly enough, I've got something from back in 2015 that's doing some MVC. Anyways, um, to create a new repository, you're just gonna click this plus new repository. This is creating a basically a folder, if you will, on GitHub. Um, you're going to want to select your owner. You probably don't have the options in a drop down like I do, but I'm just going to select my name here. And I'm just going to make uh, what's called a, uh, like a 5K calculator. And so this is just a dummy project that's going to say, hey, you know, how fast can you run uh, 100 meters? And it will estimate your 5K time. Just whatever. It's just not the point of this demonstration. I'm going to mark this as private um, because it's not open source software. I don't want anyone else on the internet committing and pushing to my repo. It's just going to be for me and my friends and my family. And, you know, if I want to share it with my students, maybe my students can commit to it, something like that. I'm going to add a readme file This, you know, I can write like a description of the project should I choose. I'm using Visual Studio to do this, uh, Visual Studio Code 2022. So my Git Ignore will be VS Visual Studio. And MIT's open licensing basically says, you can take this code and use it how you want. It is free and open source and I don't care. It's not commercial. I don't care how you use it. I'll create my repository. This creates a 5K calculator on github.com. Uh, what I like to do is I like to click on this green code button and copy the URL uh, that is terminated with .git. 
There's some other options here, open with GitHub Desktop, open with Visual Studio, and you know these other options, depending on depending on like what software that you have configured on your computer to open up by default, these links, in my experience, don't always work as described. Like you might say, open up with GitHub Desktop and it opens up with another Git, uh, Git software. Okay, so I'm because of that, because it really just depends on your computer's configuration, and I'm just gonna click on the link and copy that URL. And then I'm just gonna kind of more manually go into Visual Studio 2022. This is the community edition for free. I'm gonna click on clone a repository. I'm gonna paste in the full, rep and, and it even tells you to put in the dot git and uh, pay attention to where it's cloning locally. So that this is the local file path. So now I've got a remote repository and I've got a local repository. I'm gonna click on the clone button and yesterday because i was not properly authenticated with the right account that actually aired out and the way i got around that was i changed my repo from private to public and i said you shouldn't have to do that i just demonstrated if you're authenticated with your github credentials um you should just get right in now if you're not authenticated with your github credentials that process will probably prompt you for your github credentials Okay, and I don't know if anybody's following along live, but I actually, yes, I see some people, they're being prompted for their GitHub credentials. Okay, so you have to know your GitHub username and password. Like if there's one thing that we all struggle with is remembering all of our usernames and remembering all of our passwords, that's ultimately on you. I can't help you with that. You might have to forgot your password. You might have to forgot your username. That's on you. You have to know your credentials. Can't help you there. But I did clone locally. And if I just kind of click on what's called File Explorer, I should be able to kind of navigate in to see users, e, ooh, EA Gudmestead. That's loud. Uh, source, repos. And right here is my 5K calculator with a git ignore, a license, and a readme. Now I'm gonna draw attention to this one file right here. This one file, excuse me, this one folder, um, you might notice if you're paying close attention that this folder is kind of transparent. You gotta take a close look. Versus like if I look at this folder over here that just says LB4, that folder is not transparent at all. What that indicates is that folder is actually a hidden folder on my computer. Okay, and, and right now, I have a setting in File Explorer to view my hidden folders. That is not a default. Let me show you, if you click on this view, see this right here, hidden items? If I uncheck that, that is unchecked by default. Notice how that dot .git folder goes away. Obviously, if I'm not viewing hidden items, I don't see that hidden folder. I'm gonna check that and notice how that dot .git comes back. That folder right there is an important folder. That folder tells me that this 5K calculator is a local repository. Because of the existence of this hidden folder, .git, I know that this 5K calculator folder on my computer is synced up to some online repository. Okay, so that's just kind of an important note that's, that, that's whatever, that's worth noting. Now, it's also kind of worth noting that this opens in a folder view inside of Visual Studio. You know, some people like working in, in a folder view. That's not me. Like, I really don't like working in a folder view. Um, maybe you do, I don't know your preferences, but I'm just gonna go ahead and close that folder, okay? And then I'm just gonna create uh, some C-sharp code like, like we know how by creating a new project, making sure that this project is inside of that folder, okay? So I'm gonna create a, you know, a Windows Form app and I'm gonna choose the right location. This is obviously not defaulting to my correct repository. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go into C, users, EA, source, repos, 
5k calc and select that folder okay my solution will be named 5k calculator and my project will be named 5k 5k calculator um, place the solution and project in the same directory this at this point would help me avoid some unnecessary subfolders so I'm gonna go ahead and mm, I normally don't check that I might get the unnecessary subfolders I just normally don't check that so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna check that okay create okay so creating my little source code the source code again is not the point of this video let me go ahead and let this finish loading and I'll just drag a button on here and save it up and we have successfully cloned we've put some new stuff in that folder and so now we're ready to both commit and push in order to commit and push inside of Visual Studio you need a um, a window that window is called get changes notice my get changes is right here if that is not part of your view like let me do this I'm gonna go to tools uh, excuse me window and I'm gonna reset my window layout because I'll just go back to defaults and notice by default get changes is right here okay so you might have moved that around if you close it if you accidentally close get changes you can reopen it off of view get changes and it'll it'll reopen right again you close it by accident again you can click window reset the layout and that brings it back or it's also under view there's a lot of good stuff under view like your solution explorer get changes there's a lot of good stuff under view a lot of good windows under view Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna say initial project creation. Okay, and I'm gonna click on commit all. Now, remember that a commit is creating a local save point. Okay, all I did was create a save point on my desktop. Okay, it doesn't do anything for my github.com repository. In order for that commit to be synced up, to github.com I have to push and that's this button right here nice and easy let's click on push and again because I'm authenticated uh, I get a successfully push to origin main okay this was the error that I was getting yesterday because I was not authenticated if I go back to my repo and refresh I now have initial project creation there's my solution file and there are my files synced up on github Again, I think this is a benefit to you because this allows you to just use this one tool um, to um, uh, 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 you know, push and pull and do all this kind of stuff. Now, the next thing I wanted to demonstrate was, okay, um, let's just say I have a, a local repository that that needs to be updated so you guys just took a test yesterday and so I haven't pulled your test onto my computer so what I might do is just open up uh, and, and I'm not gonna look at I'm not gonna look at any of the files but I'm just gonna open up um, Uh, uh, one of your repositories so again I can open a project or solution but let's just try opening a local folder I have all of your repositories stored right here and this is uh, AWD 1100 and it, again I'm not gonna look at any code so uh, Hussein you're the first in the list so I'm going to be taking a look at your repo and um, this is now opening it again in this folder view and what I want to do is do a pull so 
Um, a fetch will basically tell me if there are changes on his remote repo. And it says, hey, I have two changes. In other words, Hussein has made two changes to his github.com repo that I do not have on my computer. Okay, so a fetch is just going to look at the differences between what's on my computer and what's on github.com. Um, so then I go ahead and pull those down, initiating pull. And it says repository updated to commit, right? So that's how to do a pull. Um, obviously, at that point, I should be able to go into his hands-on test, you know, chapter eight, and there's his solution file, and I could open that solution file. That was not on my computer a matter of minutes ago, right? Um, I could go in there, I could make a change, and I could do a push. So, for example, let's just make a dummy document inside of his repository. I'm going to go to Documents, GitHub, uh, here. Here's his, uh, here's his repo. And inside of Chapter 8, I'm just going to make a dummy document. And I'm just going to call this rubric. And Hussein's going to get um, 100%. Okay, so now I have a new document in his repository. And if I go to get changes, you can actually see that right now in Visual Studio, uh, it can notice the changes. And I'm gonna say added a dummy rubric. I'm gonna commit and I'm gonna push. Right, pulling, pushing, Visual Studio community, the main thing, get your GitHub account properly authenticated and everything works pretty seamlessly once you get that taken care of. Okay, last little thing to do is to uh, look at the command line. And the command line, um, again, is what you might call for power users. Um, let me pull up one of my uh, one second. The Git website gives you some pretty good explanations of what the commands are out there if you ever need to go out there. And yeah, so what is the Git website? It's uh, Git SCM, I believe. So you all went to um, you all went to this website and downloaded Git at the beginning of this class. Obviously, to do any of this, you're going to need this software on your computer. Um, you know, Git is the underlying software that allows these files to transfer back and forth between the repositories, you know, and enables these commands. You know, these GUI tools behind the scenes use these commands. Uh, and there is documentation, um, you know, and here's your, here's your GitHub cheat sheet um, in English. And so literally this thing that we just passed out, um, all the commands are right here. This is the same, same thing. Uh, so that's good, good call. Um, again, I've got all of my repos here. And so I'll hop on to Ben's. And you can right click and you don't see any any command prompt but if you hold what is it shift oh actually i'm sorry there it is git bash here okay so you i'm going to start by going to the folder i'm going to right click and open up git bash here it's going to open up our command prompt and i need to do a pull which uh, we could start with a fetch, just like I did. Git fetch. So it's just G-I-T fetch. You can also look up at the top. I believe in the yellow there, and it'll tell you what directory you're in. That way you know you're pulling and pushing to the right directory. Oh, right there in the yellow? Yeah. Yep, good eye. And let's do a git pull. Okay. Tells me, Ben's. I'm already up to date. Um, so... Uh, 
Did you push your test by chance, or maybe I already maybe I already pulled it? Okay, let's let's go uh, to the next local repo. I, I believe Ben's. I already did a pull on, so let's do get bash, get fetch. Okay, uh, there. Obviously, that looked a little bit different than with Ben's because with Ben's I already had it up to date. Then I'll do a get pull. Okay, there you go. You can see I pulled down Alexis's hands-on test. Now if I go to the hands-on test folder, chapter eight, there we go, there's her hands-on test. Let me create a new file called rubric. And let's do a commit. Um, so a git commit, git commit minus M for the message. And I'll say added dummy rubric. Yeah. Okay, so it's more or less saying, hey, I do see these um, untracked files, and I think this is a bad demonstration here. The one I want to add, because I, I don't want to add these other ones, I just want to add the rubric.txt. Uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to copy that rubric.txt and I'm going to do just as it tells me git add and uh, right click paste and let me clean that up hands on test and let's see if I put it in quotes okay that went through now that I've added, now let's commit, and now let's push. And there we go. All right, so there's using some command line tools, GUI tools, <coughs> a bunch of different ways of doing kind of the same thing. If you type git GUI in there. Right here, git GUI. Yeah. And then that shows your changes, and you can just kind of drag and drop them to push and commit. Yep. So here's here's another tool, Git GUI. Now the question is right here, Git GUI here. And it'll do the same. Same same mm -hmm. thing. Yep. All right. All right. I'm gonna stop that video there.